you know, there are two stages of getting a job. Number one is getting an interview call and number two is cracking that interview call. In this video, we have Samyukta, who is a product manager at JP Morgan Chess, which is one of the biggest bank in America. Plus, she never had product manager experience. So that's cool how she got the interview calls and how she cracked it. But the beautiful part about this whole podcast in this video is that Samyukta, when she got an interview call, she has never been rejected or got the offer cancelled after she has gotten the interview call which is the mind-blowing part to me and there's a reason behind it because there is a secret sauce which she has she has an art of interviewing how she cracks and the mindset behind it the preparation behind it and i guarantee you that you have to start taking notes from getting the interview call to cracking the interview call to negotiating your offer i hope that you find it valuable and if you do please let me know in the comment section and now i'll let you enjoy that so let's do a quick intro where are you from what do you do fun stuff about you sure uh, my name is samyukta uh, i am from uh, vishakhapatnam in south india from andhra uh, but my mother tongue is odia so basically came from this mixed culture i yes. currently live in bay area california i graduated in 2019 with a bachelor's in information systems from san francisco state university and have been working as a product manager ever since graduating mm. of course i had different roles during my internship period but my full time roles have always been in product management and i ran in my dream role at jp morgan chase uh, which i joined a little shy of 6 months before just a testament to the fact that if i can do it anybody can do it so. yes yes <laughs> getting interview calls is very important and especially people who doesn't have experience it's so hard to get interview calls because if you see the job positions and job description it says entry level but then it'll in the description it'll say 4 years experience required how did you get interview calls what was your strategy to start getting interview calls okay uh, having said that uh, no one's perfect where mm-hmm. even i have gone through a phase where i have done 150 to 200 applications blindly a day with one resume sitting in class lectures doing it that did not work so mm-hmm. one of my secret sauces and something that i hold true to even till date is the mindset game i played on myself Yeah. So firstly, when I had the roles clarified, I knew I knew that you know projects, product slash program. I had to take a step back and say that, hey Sam, you have six months or like seven months to get a job. Yeah. Desperation is not going to lead you anywhere. I told myself like, hey, I think you're just being desperate for a job, and it's not going to happen there. Mm-hmm. I think your desperation is overtaking your passion. your desperation is overtaking the fact that you are able mm. you will get a job as a pm mm. you have the skills to be as a pm mm. so I, then i started i i really took some time off i didn't apply for one two weeks i really did not apply for one two weeks i got out of that thing that funk that i was in because the constant rejection was not helping me the desperation was not helping me the pressure that i put on myself was not helping me mm. as you can see i am i'm a person who's typically very hard on myself that i would not <laughs> enc- i would not encourage that but being hard on myself made me self aware Yeah. So the mindset game was get out of the desperation. Apply to 20 roles, but you know what the 20 roles are. Mm. You know what 20 companies that they are. Mm. So so the point number 2 is I set my expectation. I I got closely aligned to my expectations. I was maybe not applying to Coinbase or or any other crypto based uh, companies or like fintech companies right off the bat uh because I was very self aware that okay, still no experience, let me start small baby steps. Mm. So then moving on i went to indeed and i started applying on indeed it worked out at that point then yeah. i started to apply on indeed and i think i got a lot more traction from indeed than i did on linkedin of course it's going to be very different from what majority of the people here like you know linkedin and automated but <laughs> this is my experience this is how the landscape was 3 to 4 years back and so you obviously uh, spend time on mindset change and then you yes. change the strategy applying to quality application is what i would call it like effective quality application but then how did you start get, like i i still feel there is something different in your resume you did that you yes. started getting call because you were applying and you were not getting calls now yes. something must have be different that you started getting calls yes uh, as as cliche as my answer will be it is my resume that was a game changer Mm. I simplified my resume. I had plain text. I had a good summary. I had clear indication of skills, tools, experience in terms of the industries and you know the other work that I have done. I 
and as as i think if you remember it goes back to the fact that i had very mindfully taken three elective courses as yeah. my projects yeah now i presented my projects as a product mm. for my product manager resume my product is a uh, caltrain station app that sets reminders wow. ge- geo based reminders location reminders so when you're re- approaching the station it will wake you up Mm. <laughs> I present I presented my app as a product not as primarily a college project wow. and I reworded that and that was getting the hints. Can we share your resume to show how did you do that? Yes. This is probably an, an example of how I would show school projects uh, on my resume and also a bonus tip add this on your LinkedIn profile in terms of projects that you've done. Mm. Do yeah. not underestimate the value of adding college projects as school projects. Um, on your LinkedIn, yeah. So real quick. So as I mentioned, um, have a quick summary layout of this is this resume is have a quick summary to the point. Use mm. good action words. Have your education first because since you're just graduating, highlight that education. Highlight your work experience in your internships. You know it mm. can be from India, it can be from the US. Highlight your experience in skills. I again have reiterated that experience, languages, software. Mm. When I look at this three years later, I would <laughs> do this differently. But this is my the honest raw version of what I used yeah, in the yeah, first yeah. first row. Yeah. And as you can see, school projects. Mm. I use action words. I built a GPS based reminder app. I designed a desktop messaging platform. I established a team. I managed and contributed. As you can mm. see, I'm using. strong words here mm. and very confidently because i have led these projects in its different time frames yeah know, so I, when yeah. they ask me for details i can tell the details now you started getting calls the biggest thing is cracking the pm interview especially the one who doesn't have experience so what is i mean i'm assuming you have some form of uh, interview skill like what how did you prep for it what was your interviewing a uh, technique and like what did you do uh, let, let's backtrack a little bit because i do want to give as much detail because uh, mm. details matter right so mm. let's start off from the recruiter call so when the recruiter calls one of the strategy for me is i let the recruiter speak a little lot more so mm. tell me about the role tell me how the company is doing in the current market condition so my pro tip wow. is form two questions to ask back to the recruiters mm So the strategy, I think it it starts from from the recruiter process. So I would just want to walk everyone through it mm. in mm. in detail as much as I can, and, and my secret sauce will come into picture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. First, We're building the suspense over here. <laughs> yes, yes. I I promise it will be worth it. <laughs> yes, it will be. Yeah. First thing is you cannot fake passion and authenticity. So please be real. Mm. As much cliche as it sounds, product. manager a management role is not your ego boosters you really have to be you have to have a calling for it to be good at it mm. ask yourself first you want to be a great product manager or want you to be an average xyz i mm. think that build your confidence revolving that okay having said that let's get into the practical applications yeah tweak your project info but do not fake your resume mm. have notes prepared on how your resume flow will be when a recruiter calls be prepared for that in two three lines okay know your resume in and out always research about the company go to the mm. latest news look at acquisitions look at who got fired or hired ask the recruiters about take interest in the roles responsibilities and the company they that mm. will show that you are just not an employee mm. trying to get a job yeah yeah you know? um set clear expectations at the end of the call when can i hear back what is the process can mm-hmm. you connect me to the hiring manager in the meantime if you don't ask for it you will not get it and you will just be waiting like okay it's been 7 days i didn't get a call back set clear expectations wow. yeah i love it yeah now the recruiter will feel like okay you're taking a personal interest you you're a person that who is open sociable can talk and you know that that's those are very key things about characteristics of product manager folks right yeah yeah move on from the recruiter the recruiter passes on to you to the hiring manager phase so yeah. i'm trying to uh, diverge to three to four rounds that a pm would go through typically i know you mentioned that you also asked a lot of questions to recruiter in the screening round yes. what are some of the question people should prepare and should ask them okay you can ask the recruiter hey describe to me who your ideal candidate is 
And if I can give you examples, I think I can reassure you that I am the ideal candidate. That's mm. one question. Wow. Second really? question. Really? Like, is, is uh, you would say something like that? Yeah. Uh, I think this question sometimes the recruiter call is thirty minutes. I can ask yeah. the recruiter this question. Sometimes the fifteen minutes I don't ask this question. I ask the mm. hiring manager that question right. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I go to the questions that I ask the hiring manager too. That's one question. Second question is, let's take the current job market situation. So. you know i understand that you're a startup you know how much funding have you secured what is the current headcount what are your hiring plans and expansion plans so you are taking interest in making sure that they are not over hiring and you're questioning back if they're over hiring so just it's just a awareness yeah yeah you know, you're taking interest in the company just not getting a job again mindset game you know yeah and and it's it's also two way hiring right like it's not just them hiring you you are also choosing to work for that company so you are also interviewing them yes yes please never be under the impression that you cannot choose you can definitely choose you mm. will choose and you have the power to choose a company like yeah. it's a two way street so don't forget yeah. that the third question is clear expectations so i had an amazing call with you thank you so much for your time uh, when do you think i can expect to hear back from you that mm. one question can save you a lot of anxiety <laughs> when you're just waiting for a call to come back especially when you're dealing with multiple interviews so set clear expectations last bit of the questions is hey do you mind sharing the hiring manager's name so i can look him up or do you mind sharing the schedule of how you think what the other rounds would be so ask mm. more about the interview process in itself how many rounds do you think it would be you know can you give me some tips mm. ask them because they want you on board they are willing to help you to come on board so correct yeah people, yeah. yeah and 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 the recruiter's job is to fill that position so they are you know they are trying to make sure that hey we are going to spend so much time so i want to make sure this is the right candidate and i want to help you get the help you need so that's you are right yeah ask those yeah. questions yeah ask those questions um, now moving from the recruiter to the mm. hiring manager phase something that i have done in all throughout my interviews and through my professional career is i make a presentation about myself so when the hiring manager comes on screen these are the small things be on video be presentable have your authentic confident self like you are going to kill the interview that's a given you know it's yeah. just a matter of time passing by i create a presentation uh, so when they ask, when the question the, the hiring manager asks so okay you know this is me i do xyz and you know yeah so tell me a little bit about yourself I yeah, and this ask. is a very universal question. Everyone will ask you. Tell me about yourself. Yeah. Yes. Or tell me about yourself and your previous role and experience. Let's mm. let's just call that as a question. So then I mm. would say, uh, Hey, do you mind if I run through a presentation real quick? It should not take more than ten minutes. And I feel like uh, this Wait, can be really question. like actually share a presentation instead of like directly answering it. Yes. Yes. And most people are okay with that. most people are okay with that and sometimes the feedback is like they t- they are taken aback they're like oh presentation yeah sure like we don't know like if anybody has done that but i'm really curious now like that triggers the hiring manager to pay attention to you if he or she is not mm. on video that uh, communicates that you are a visual person and a lot of people are visual we are talking about interviews in pandemic times where i yeah. may zone out you may zone out so i felt like presentation was the key for me to narrow down that focus yeah and so, can we can we share uh, can you share the presentation which you did yes i can <laughs> definitely share my screen and and walk you through the ultimate uh, secret sauce that that yudi has been pushing me recording me to to share with all of you and i will do that <laughs> i will do that with no hesitation i want everybody to have this this resource and this idea mm So firstly I introduce myself so I have some personal pictures that uh, introduce me as a person yeah. and you may never know they might be your alumni they might be actually liking cold play concert and they may be a dog person so you're connecting with them on a personal level good foot in the door I move on to highlights where I highlight my strength mm. I don't call it weakness but I call it improvement areas and I then love that. yeah and I am not shy from saying that these are my accomplishments mm. a lot of people are shy to say that these are my accomplishments even just reading this obviously i'm i'm seeing this uh, maybe like second time because you showed me just before we started filming yeah. uh, um i can relate to you as a hiring manager when we were interviewing for product managers at my company i yes. can relate to you also it shows me empathizing with customers absolutely must have for a product manager 
happy yes. customers and teams tells me about that love that talking too fast so <laughs> it tells me, it makes it more authentic it makes you you as a human and you're open that okay this is something you're working on so i love it i love this that i can relate to you now on a different level versus yes. just as a candidate yes and i i talk too fast so why not just say that you know that that's my improvement area <laughs> Uh, so uh, as you can see like you you have these i wouldn't say the small talk but you you kind of engage with the hiring manager in mm. a fun light hearted way while getting the job done that's mm. the balance that yeah. i would like all of you to learn yeah these are you know then i have a, a slide of testimonials that my my previous folks have written about me like you know mm. Mm. high energy message you know protecting your engineers from sleep probe and then Uh, me being me, I would like crack a lame joke saying that you know I swear I did not bribe my team members to write these about me. These are very authentic <laughs> testimonials that have come out. So again, say I made you smile and made you laugh for a bit. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Just like okay, like I am, I'm pitching myself. Mm. But it's but like it's a, a pitch deck. Yeah, it is a pitch deck. Yeah. 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 But I I have boundaries. I'm I'm not saying that I'm the best and I'm perfect, but I'm showing my true self. You mm. know. Then I would actually go through the. processes of what i did at the agency i would run them through this i would tell them that hey this is my understanding of product management let me know if you have any questions based on these focus areas turn it back to the hiring manager to ask them for them to ask you questions mm. Mm. moving on i would go to my second role i would now here the key is show your uh, tools like the tools that you've used mm. in this deck you will realize that i am not talking about this product 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 i'm trying to cover my skills the tools my experience my indi- my personality all in a balanced fashion yeah. so here i'm like i'm i would say this hey this is how i use confluence so i have experience using confluence checkbox for pm mm. i would then run them through how i did product planning you core product planning at carrot using product board so this shows product experience mm I would then walk them through on prioritization, which you've heard from all the interviews <laughs> done with you, Dion. How PMs need to prioritize. I would, I would walk them through my prioritization process over here. Hmm. This is so awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I would then uh, tell them that hey, but I'm an engineer's best friend too, so I know Jira. So you know, this is my, this is my roadmap. This is how, this is how I'm running my show, and this is where everything's at. So then I would highlight my skills of transparency. It shows that you know Jira, like a project management tool. It also shows that you know how to roadmap a product. So um, that's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I would show data. You know, and what tools that I use in my company I would show them that hey, I also have experience in in data tracking because your OKRs and KPIs lead up to data. So I'm data focused as well. I would then just show them like yes, this is how I would write a split test. So split test is again a marketing language. Mm-hmm. So again, not always product, product, product. Diversify your pitch deck. Show them a little bit of everything. Mm. show them how you how you would write possibly tickets mm. summarize with one slide saying that i'm a key player sitting between all these three teams mm. or four teams and these these are my uh, expertise in in what i create in terms of documentation or like value tangible value so in summary what this what what this pitch deck does is you introduce yourself personally you've highlighted your accomplishments you've walked them through your process and now they will have better uh, they'll have actually questions oh that's great can you go back to the product prioritization process um can you talk uh, a little bit more yeah. so you are making it easier for a hiring manager to interview you and and i don't know if you obviously i'm assuming you have that intention and purpose but also you are driving the interview like i yes. don't know if you noticed that because if they are asking the follow up question then you exactly know why you put that prioritization and how you decided so you yes. are like you want them to ask those question because this is your masterpiece you can answer anything yes. i love this this is so mind blowing i i'm so <laughs> glad you shared this because i feel everybody should do this uh and and i just want to like reach uh, mm-hmm. talk about for people who are not product managers program managers should do this project managers should do this do yeah. this uh, even like developers and engineers they can prepare a pitch deck for their specific areas because like you mentioned it's not just product 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 it's like personality marketing yes. tools yes. you use so so many things and 
I, I, this is amazing. I'm glad you shared this. Yeah. I can see why you never got a reject because this would be highlight of the interview. Like I would remember you just because of this. I'm like, I want to, I want this person on my team. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think visuals, uh, visuals create a lot of impact. Visuals have a lot more power. And mm. yes, you, you are kind of driving the interview. You, you're driving the interview in the sense that you have your resume prepared. You have a deck prepared. Come whatever questions you can answer them. Mm. Um, what are some of the other PM rounds? And uh, like, I know we were at yes. the hiring manager. Yeah. Right? So what yeah. are some of the rounds and the questions they ask? Okay. So assuming that I just got done with the hiring manager, I went to this deck. It usually has a very positive response, follow-up yeah. questions, so on and so forth. And then they ask you, okay, so do you have any questions for me? And then this is when sometimes depending on the vibe of the hiring manager, if I'm having a more friendly or if I'm having a more upfront, I would tweak the questions, but the questions would be, so, you know, can you tell me a little bit more about who your ideal candidate is? And if I have examples, um, I would be glad to share them and reassure that, that I would be a good fit. So <laughs> I'm confidently pitching myself, Yeah. but I'm also asking them, tell me who I'm looking for. So if I have that experience, I will tell you that I have the experience. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. this is, this is a subtle line of not telling that I'm perfect. I'll give you all examples. Uh, also something that I didn't highlight in, in the pitch deck, but I do it verbally is, is I do highlight failures too. Mm. So mm. for example, in the product prioritization slide, um, I would say that, yeah, but you know, this one time it didn't go well. I think I'm just looking into ideas. Show them what you're doing in current. Like, you know, after this meeting, what is the next? Like, yeah, you know, like I'm just thinking about how should I prioritize this? But okay, like coming back to the interview. So mm. show them your thought process that show them that it's not rosy. You're, you're thinking, you know, yeah. you have this critical analysis. But yes, for hiring manager questions would be asking them the ideal candidate, who mm -hmm. the ideal candidate is for them, asking them, how they do product management or mm. how they did how how they did product management when they were three years in asking critical feedback about your interview i would ask them right there wow. I would say that, you know, and do people usually respond yes they do and but are I, they honest i guess they will respond because you are <laughs> putting them on spot but uh will they will they give you honest feedback or will they just generally say like it was good you know <laughs> so so see if someone says it was good like okay if it's a lukewarm response i'm mentally prepared to possibly have a tougher panel or not go to the panel and, and i will add this technique as well uh i do this as well but what instead of asking the feedback directly what i would ask is and i've done this for my interviews as well that um, is there anything I was not able to answer uh, what you're looking okay. for and uh, I can help you answer that so yes. then it just gives you they it gives them an opportunity to think of something where um, or is there something I couldn't clarify can I clarify that for you so which, another way to get a feedback which is the which is just the which is my question is just an iteration of that. You know, tell me who's an ideal candidate and if I can have examples mm. of that, I can reassure you that I actually fit into the role. Let's assume that the hiring manager is impressed with you, wants you to meet your panel. Now, this I don't have prepared, uh, which which I this is un, this is secret sauce part two again. Yeah, yeah. When I get to the panel interviews, I have the same presentation, but I add a slide on product lifecycle, product development, product OKRs and KPIs. Oh wow! I show them everything that I do on a day to day basis, mm. and I show them with a real Jira epic and one success story and one failure story. So is it like your personal Jira? Oh uh, no, the the company Jira. Mm. I I omit out things, but I I keep it vague. Of course, yeah. please do yeah. not do not uh, do anything against your NDAs and and like uh, compliance rules. Take some mm. examples. I walk the entire panel through. Okay, can can I tell you a, a, a story of a time when I was given this feedback and I had pushback, but I could make it successful? Mm. So, yeah, sure, go for it. We actually just wanted to ask you the same questions. That's really something like that. I'll walk them through that. Then I'll tell you, okay, but actually, honestly, life is not rosy. I think you also experienced a failures and deadlines. And I think even I face them, but let me tell you how I navigate it. Okay, mm. just like, hold on, let me tell you how I navigated. So I'm like making them interested in my failure story. 
because mm. I've turned my failure story into something positive of what I learned from it. So now yeah. they're not thinking about this girl who's just coming and telling, oh, how good she is. But she's also owning up the fact that she can fail, but she will learn and she'll fail mm. maybe lesser next time. Mm. Mm. So yeah. I go, I walk them through that. It's like, yeah, you know, the, the stakeholder was completely not on board. No amount of meetings or communications was getting through. So I decided to trim down the MVP to meet the scope. So I made an mm. MMVP. Then I reached this deadline. After that, I brought in my external stakeholders, my manager to help me in the perception. So this is also to say that as a PM, you need to take help. Be mm. open to taking help. You do not need to run the entire show. There is no shame in saying that, hey, manager, can you please help me? He's not He's not coming on the same page. Yeah, and it also shows that you are a very communicative. You are, uh, it shows that you are um, very transparent and communication is big because a lot of times stakeholders are like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't yeah. have any progress uh, metrics like what's going on. It In your answer, it shows that you are communicating weekly, daily, and keeping your stakeholders up to date. Yes. So I would introduce the presentation to the entire panel and we would get into breakout rooms. Um, some people have typical questions to ask. Some people would just like to know, how do you focus on engineering teams? Like, what's your vibe with them? Mm -hmm. Some people would just, some other person would ask like, okay, like tell me like, why Confluence? Like, why not this? So just mm -hmm. be prepared for a couple of uh, answers just shooting your way. You can never be prepared for these panel interviews completely because they're so personal to the panelists asking. Yeah, them. yeah post the panelists round, I think they will all come back into the Zoom meeting. And I think, again, I would ask the same question, like, hey, I hope I could give you an entire overview of my thought process, both positive, negative uh, learnings, and me as a person a little bit. But if there's anything that I missed, please let me know. Mm. You know, just an open-ended question. And then it would be any open-ended question. Yes, no, cool, answer it. If no, uh, then I would then I would excuse myself with just the hiring manager. Mm. So don't go don't get nervous and just like shut off the meeting saying that oh it's over. Right. Say that thank you guys. Hey hiring manager, do you have five minutes to debrief with me? Yeah. Then yeah. you tell him saying that you know, hey I had an amazing time. I think you have an amazing team. Uh, I had a lovely time chatting with them. This is how the this is how I felt about the interview. So again you are ask you are presenting yourself. You are again pitching yourself. Mm. So, uh, when do you think uh, they would give you their feedback back mm. by? Mm. And what do you think are the next steps? And then the hiring manager would typically reply back to me saying, that's great, you know, like, it sounds like you had an amazing interview and sounds like you enjoyed it. It shows up on my face that I've enjoyed an interview and I've yeah, enjoyed yeah, yeah. presenting, yeah. right? Yeah. And be like, yeah, we'll get back to you by the end of next week. And then you can be like, okay, like, that sounds great. If the team members need my resume, please reach out to me and I'll forward them my resume. Yeah. Mm. just mm. add those touch points saying that you will be in contact if needed and you won't right. be in contact you know right, right, right. trying to show the subtle things that you can do yeah. if anybody reads my resume please let me know and i'm more than happy to forward it to them mm. people have gone to the extent of actually asking a draft of my presentation mm. after my interview rounds like they loved it <laughs> they loved it so much i'm gonna ask you that as well <laughs> 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 uh, but that's sure. awesome yeah after yeah. that, uh, there would be a waiting game of... Um, uh, I can already see comments for audience. Can we get the draft from Samyukta? <laughs> so, sure. Let's see I, if, I'm, if, I'm, if, I'm, of course, I'm more than happy to, to share a, a template, to share the draft. Again, be yourself. You do not need to be me to get interviews. You do not need to be me to get jobs. You have your own strength. You have your own personality. Yeah, you Make have to shine. customize hey, it to yourself and personalize customize it. Customize it yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the fact that I can come on board three years after using this and giving it to everyone uh, just indicates that this is an open. I am not gatekeeping. I want you guys yeah, to be as course. successful as, as you can be ever. You know? o only if there's 500 comments, then only you'll get it. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. Yes, just, let's do that. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, but... After the hiring, so there's a there's a waiting game after the panel interviews. There's a waiting game usually. Uh, the panel interviews are mostly done with the case study, which is why I could you know you make a case study presentation, which I mentioned like failure, success, project life cycle. So sometimes the case study comes after the panel when they're completely sure. Sometimes it comes before or comes. Sometimes it comes included open-ended over here mm -hmm. 
it's a waiting game and then you get to the stage where you receive the amazing phone call saying that you know yeah hey, you know we are interested to chat more and again i think this can be a separate topic then i do have some experience in negotiating in in clarifying questions and clarifying answers but i think three to four rounds well prepared confident authentic taking accountable owning up to yourself make fun of yourself have some jokes show them who you are as a person i mean who would not want to relate to you in the interviews you know? yeah 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 i love it and i know you alluded that maybe this is a separate topic but i was going to actually my follow up sure. question was going to be uh, obviously the next step is offer and negotiation and because the way you interview is so interesting to me i want to know how you negotiate that like sure. what's how what's the conversation you have in the negotiation phase what's your approach on it sure i think i start the negotiation right from the first call with the recruiter actually mm. so we are asking go, what's the you, range if you go back to my questions and the recruiter always asks you like okay so what is your desired compensation answer back to them saying that hey do you mind sharing a salary range that i can validate mm-hmm. yeah yeah so you put the recruiter on the spot and i think 90% of them are bound to give you a range yeah yeah you know and, and and if you say what your desired range is then you have already pigeon hole yourself like this is what yes. so don't has it like samyukta samyukta mentioned that don't give out your range first ask them reverse like okay what what is the typical salary range for this role you offer so yes. then they will have to tell you that yes uh, and especially i think in california especially like i think salary ranges have, have been, it, it's it's law that's it's more public so use that uh, to your benefit and definitely ask the question uh, in a nice polite way not like you tell me and then i'll, you know, I'll <laughs> yeah. tell you but like right. um so my prep for negotiation has already begun in my first question to the recruiter mm-hmm. there mm-hmm. so i get an xyz range right mm-hmm. throughout the process with the panel with the hiring manager with the recruiter i have assessed my roles and responsibilities of how much work they want me to do mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. i have made a mental note of it i mean i have made like physical notes of it okay i actually am doing this day to day job how is it different from my current then that's a separate column how is it different from my current Mm. am i getting more work am i getting less work mm. am i dealing with a difficult infrastructure am i de- dealing with like a different team a bigger size team these are the questions i've already figured out during my interview process from the recruiter to the panel mm. right based on those differences i would then negotiate saying that hey based on my understanding i believe the responsibility of this this role uh, demands a little bit more from me because this is what i have done xyz um i am excited i'm on board to take new responsibilities uh, i'm ready to lead a team of 15 instead of 6 so i'm just saying like your mentor would do this yeah, yeah. you would pitch you would pitch it to the recruiter saying that i'm excited and to come on board and take a responsibilities which are a little outside my comfort zone and which are a little more mm. demanding of what my current role is hence i believe i would be i would be more than willing or i would come on board at this range Mm. justify your explanation when you're negotiating mm. just don't say that i want this much money i want yeah. this much money mm. uh, because again mindset shift mindset yeah. game self awareness yeah you if you are really passionate about product if you're really passionate about providing value you will be able to ask the question you don't have to like mm. copy the words that someone is telling you to ask these questions it'll come it'll come from you it'll come from within you saying that i am rightfully asking the salary because i'm very excited to come and do this work <laughs> but i have bills to pay yeah and i yeah. and i will negotiate yeah. yeah yeah having said that i know most of the folks who are seeing this can be new into the workforce who have uh, a a sense of um, fear to negotiate mm. so what i would advise is that if you're not able to create the pitch that i just mentioned it still does not harm to negotiate for like a 5 to 10k range Mm. because nobody is going to and i said nobody assuming that nobody most of them won't just blindly say that no we can't do that yeah. it's still a very normal range right you know? and and yeah and, they they might just tell you um sorry we can't do that uh, the yeah. best we can do is what we have offered yes. you yes 
So you will still have an opportunity to go back to your original offer. So don't hesitate uh, to negotiate. Negotiate at least five to ten k. That's your comfort zone. Don't be afraid to negotiate. But if you're an experienced person, if you you know if you're in a position of one to two years of experience and you're negotiating like a fifteen to twenty k range, then add value to your negotiation. Yeah. For yeah. sure, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I negotiate. I definitely negotiate uh, base comp. I definitely negotiate uh, stocks depending on the company mm. that that I'm joining. PTOs are being said to be in open negotiations. Is what I learned very much later in my in my work life, seeing that people even negotiate in PTOs. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. the recruiter that you talk to in the beginning is the one who's going to talk to you in the end, right? Right. Yeah. So you've already made a connection with him or her. Because you ask the job market questions all that, don't be afraid to ask them. So, what are the things do we have room for negotiation with? You know, do I have negotiation mm. of sign on bonus? Do I have negotiation of hey, can I have it fully remote, not work from home, and come to a, a salary which does not f- let me to commute and my salary goes in gas, for example. Mm. So, mm. do your own research and ask them back the questions like. So I got into your company policies. Can you tell me some grounds of things that are open to negotiation? Because you may be a newcomer and you may just think salary is the only thing to be negotiated. But mm-hmm. I can tell you after three years of work experience, it really depends. It's <laughs> it's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is so awesome. I'm so glad I asked you <laughs> this because uh, it's gonna help people with the context and how to approach things. So thank you for sharing it. Of course. Um, what now that you've been working as a pm uh, for almost 3 years or more than 3 years uh, what are some of the skills you would now recommend people like these are the skills they should start building if they are in school for someone st- uh, still is an active college student and is in the process of graduating focus on taking projects that you can turn into products mm. a tangible product that's number one try to lead authentically in those teams in those projects so when it comes to your resume you are not uh, stumbling on what the outcome was and you are prepared to uh, to answer the good bad the ugly everything about your project put yourself out there and, and be visible in mm-hmm. in your college in your department in the linkedin community in your uh, portfolio put yourself out there mm-hmm. be visible saying that yes you are passionate about product management this is what you're doing on a day to day basis you know yeah. something that i would i would like you guys to also prepare is create your own product principles and values mm. what when do you mean by hiring, that yes so when the hiring manager or when the panelist usually asks you what did you do when this thing failed how would you do this differently um what did you what was the hardest time of your life like <laughs> what do you not or what do you not like about product management that's a those are very viable questions that i'm going to ask you as i said the job here is not to look like a perfect product man have to be an authentic product manager mm-hmm. so create your own product principles and values create your own definition of how you would actually solve the problem do not take a cookie cutter answer from google or some product management uh, interview textbook questions and be like okay this is how i would do it Mm. you know so create mm. your own principles and create and I'll, I'll give an example so create your own principles and create your own values set on product mm. you know in interviews try not to be too formal be open be fun yeah, yeah. say the say that hey can you can you hear me over my thick indian accent it's okay <laughs> to say that it's, right it's okay to own up who you are nobody is judging you yeah you yeah, yeah yeah open up to yourself don't be too formal and kind of avoid unnecessary jargon mm. don't keep saying road map road map road map okay <laughs> okay okay yeah. kpi kpi yeah. kpi i can see if you do that that you just came for an interview mm. you don't give to you don't give a shit about the role or shit about the company you just want a job because you know you have 50000 known for masters it can be the case mm. do not get me wrong do not get me wrong and like attack me saying that you know of course that is our rea- of course that is your reality mm. but i'm saying if you want to be a good product manager let it come from a place of heart saying that i love to do this this mm. is my passion mm. i will use all my unemployment days but i'm going to become a product manager and that shows <laughs> up and that confidence that will power mm. and that that need to do this thing will show up in into you i guarantee me like mm. trust me trust mm. me on that yeah yeah So so let me give you a quick example of creating your own product principles and value. So mm. hiring manager John has asked me, 
Hey Sam, a stakeholder is pushing back on a critical MVP product four weeks before release. How would you manage the situation? So it's like, okay, hey John, that's that's my nightmare. And you know, start off with start off with her, like, <laughs> okay, that's 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 every PM's nightmare. Like four weeks before release, a stakeholder is asking. So then I was like, then I would then I would explain, okay, John, um, one of the key things I would do is as a person. i always want to find out the perspective of the stakeholder on why he's pushing back so i would schedule an informal meeting to just understand his perspective and i want to mm. clarify with the stakeholder that i am not a pm who's coming in to to fight with him but i'm a mm. pm who's coming in to understand him so i'm giving him the importance i'm giving yeah. the stake- i'm giving the stakeholder to set the stage but i'm running the show mm. in the back you can mm. see that difference there so mm. i'll be like first thing is i get I want to get together with the stakeholder and an informal conversation, saying that hey, what's up? You know, how did the priorities change? Can I know how your perspective has changed? I hear the perspective. I tell them. I respond back, saying then, okay, great. Can you know? Let me process my thoughts together. I feel like we do have a room, uh, for compromise. Let me get back to you on a different meeting. Mm. So then, then stakeholders like, okay, cool. Like whatever, just get this done. You know, they're mm. they're in that zone. Mm. Then I would be like, okay, John, my next step is. i would take the pain points that the stakeholder has uh, provided me on why he wants to change he or she wants to change something i will go back to my road map and see if we are actually meeting it and he doesn't know about it maybe he just doesn't know about it mm. you know i would go back to my road map i would go back to my okrs i would go back to my quarterly planning and see if the pain points the stakeholder has mentioned is actually getting solved the next month or two or three months Mm. instead of stalling the project right now and getting that done mm. you know mm. fourth thing is john i would try to understand if the stakeholder is talking from a subjective or objective perspective i would then i would then confidently challenge the stakeholder back saying that hey let's get into an objective discussion or a subjective because we are product managers we want data we want data backed decisions yeah. at the end of the day right yeah. so then i'm like okay john these are the three things that i would do generally and find my way with the stakeholder but having said that uh, i know that i'm pretty new in the industry and i may not have the best experience in interpersonal maybe communication sometimes so i would be more than happy on taking your feedback and your advice while managing the stakeholder mm. so this would be my thought process so mm. okay now coming back to sam in in this interviews as as you guys have seen I just created my product principle, which is hear the stakeholder. Do not push back immediately. My product, my value is I would compare data. I would do research on okay, what did he say? Why did he say what he said? Why did she say what did she say? Mm. So you are showing your thought process in your own product principles and values mm. in this kind of question for your hiring manager, and that's what I meant by create your own product principles and values. Mm. Got it, and it also shows um, how you would do if that situation actually occur, and that situation does occur. So yes. they're trying to see how you would respond to that in real life, and your answer actually to me it shows if stakeholders comes and ask you that this is how you're gonna respond, which I really like. So I like the approach. So so yeah, no, this is. Good stuff. I even some of this I'm gonna implement <laughs> because sure. it's, it's good stuff. Um, Thank yeah. You. What's the one tip would you give to aspiring PM or a job seeker before we end the chat? And I'm probably gonna bring you back again. <laughs> sure. Um, I think you've all heard. Do not give up. Keep trying. There's no failure. It's all true. But I would I would say differently. Do not hold yourself. back from your passionate self about the product space mm. it shows up in interviews it shows up in your mindset game it shows up in your person connections it shows up on how much value and passion you have as a person do not hold yourself back from that do not hold yourself back from expressing yourself in to the interviews expressing yourself on the linkedin community doing question and answers asking you mm. the all kinds of questions do not <laughs> hold yourself back i feel mm. like there will be someone out there who's going to help you so ask cliche as it sounds just be yourself that that changes the mindset and mm. own it mm. do not think that 
you need a job the job also equally requires you so keep that confidence <laughs> yeah. in you and and yeah. i think i think you'll be fine <laughs>